Okay, welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler, and let's have some fun with uh, DAX and Power BI. So this is my second time recording this video because the first time through, I forgot to share my screen. So, yeah, that's a problem. Um, all right, so make no mistake, uh, there are plenty of no-calculate haters out there, okay? And while I don't consider Alexis Olson, you know, to be in that camp, um, he did decide to throw down with the no-calculate gang. Um, and that's right, we've got our own gang symbols now. You know, that's you better believe it. <laughs> um, of course, I'm not sure I don't I'm sure I don't do myself any favors by posting videos and like poking the bear uh, with videos titled Context Transition is for Suckers. But hey, you know, we like to have fun here. Uh, and just to be clear, before we get into all this, I do not hate the calculate function. So how I, I don't hate hate the calculate function, right? At least. Uh, my position uh, on this has always been that Calculate has its uses, right? I've never said to never use it. You kind of have to sometimes, like with uh, randomly throwing Calculate into rank X measures, for example. Um, but I feel that explicit Calculate statements in DAX code should be kind of rare. You know why? Because it's just simply not needed in the vast majority of cases. Now, my real problem with Calculate is that I feel like the DAX community as a whole is just overly fixated on the calculate function and that this fixation is is unhealthy and bad for the power back user community as as a whole um first it's it's a stupidly complex function um and to use it properly you need to really understand how it's doing things internally you need to understand concepts like context transition and you pretty much require a star schema you know and then add to that that it's just magic black box that you can't debug um and you know all of this just increases the barrier of entry, in my opinion, for for normal human beings, right? Hence, my other channel, DAX for Humans. I still believe that the vast majority of data models that are out there in Power BI are just single table data models, right? I'd be willing to bet seventy percent, you know, or upwards of eighty percent of the data models for Power BI are just single table data models, which kind of makes calculate sort of useless. Um, I mean, if you're coming from Excel. It's likely where you're going to start. Um, so forcing new DAX users down this path of using Calculate is just, in my opinion, it's just going to frustrate them unnecessarily. Um, so that's my position. You know, use it if it's working for you. But I feel that explicit Calculate statements should be exceedingly rare. Um, now, of course, the burning question about this approach is: Does it scale and perform? Right. This has been a question with the No Calculate ever since. You know, I posted you know the cal Calcu Hate article. <laughs> Um, and, and I've gotten into it on the forums with with people around the performance and scalability of this and everything else. Um, you know, but here's where I need to like kind of bring out all the myths and misinformation that are out there about Calculate. Like, you know, Calculate is, you know, you hear this stated so often, like Calculate is the most important function in DAX. Well, it very, very well may be, but does it need to be seen, right? So, it, it's already there implicitly uh, wrapping every measure that's created, right? And even certain functions, as you'll see, and I'll talk about a little later, even have Calculate kind of built right into them. Um, so that, does it need to be explicitly in your code? I don't think so um, in the vast majority of cases. And then there are all kinds of these blog articles and everything else that say like the only the only way to do context transition is to use Calculate. Well, that's, if you watched the last video, context transition is for suckers, you, that's clearly false, right? Um, there are lots of other ways to do context transition or other ways to do context transition other than using Calculate, right? And then there's all the, the statements and the articles and stuff. It's, oh, it's so fast and so performant. You know, it's it's so powerful. And that's really been the rallying cry for like the no Calculate haters out there. Um, but, you know, Brian Julius has done a tremendous amount of testing uh, around this with like the 28 days of DAX advent calendar. Um, and up to 10 million rows. Um, and he's found no statistical difference on a wide range of different measures, all 28 of them, right? Um, you know, in terms of the performance difference between a calculate approach and a no calculate approach. Um, but, but you can't prove the null hypothesis, right? So there may be some problem that calculate can solve and perform well that no calculate can't. Um, so that's essentially what the, the, the essence of this Alexis Ol Olson's challenge is. is uh, so let's take a look. All right, so he he he's, he just late, blatantly throws down me. He calls me out by name, um, challenges me to create a, a measure without calculate performs anywhere close 
to the speed that switches to an inactive relationship. So that's kind of the heart of this. Um, you know, and it may put some rules around it, right? So, um, so he's got this calendar table, and this date key is tied to some other date in here, probably something like a uh, order date or some something, something like that. Um, but he's got an inactive relationship between that date key and this delivered date key. So he's got a he's got a calculate statement here, sum of the sales amount, and he uses that inactive relationship, right? He uses that in a table where he's got like year and month in here. Um, he's got a sales amount, which is the sum of the sales amount, but here is his sales amount delivered, right? He wants to know, okay, what was delivered, you know, in those months and years, you know, what was actually delivered? This is what was sold. This is, you know, this is what was delivered, et cetera, et cetera, on down, you know, and it, he's got these slicers and all of that sort of thing. Okay, so he's, you know, he provided the Contoso sales sample. It's got about 2 million rows in it is my understanding. Um, so let's, let's take a look, right? So, this table, it's a little bit of a mess here, but uh, this table up here has his original measure. So here it is. Calculate sum, you know, use relationship and all of that. Um, and then, so I, you know, I put together a kind of, you know, the first, you know, naive approach, right? The standard sort of, you know, no calculate approach, right? Creates, you know, create a, a date table where we get the select the columns of the calendar and we grab the date key. So that gives me everything that's here, right? And then I do a filter across the all selected sales, deliver date key in dates, um, and then sum X the result, right? And Brian Julius also put together a response to this, which is a very similar approach, a little bit different, um, but essentially the same, right? Sum X across the filter table and all of that. Okay, so um, now when we test, now when we tested these with uh, where all these filters were active, you know, they were very close, within like 50 milliseconds of one another in terms of performance. Um, but when we took away all the filters, we had to go against all 2 million rows, the performance was clearly less than the calculate approach. But, you know, I got to hand it to my my boy, Tamer J1, um, <laughs> who I'm embarrassed to say, um, I have no idea what Tamer J1's real name is. Um, it's kind of like when you've been gaming Call of Duty with uh, Swizzle Stick 420 for the last five years, and you, you realize you know absolutely nothing about the dude. Um, other than, you know, it's probably a good bet that they've got this, this massive skull bong, you know, somewhere in their house. Okay. So, um, so Tamra J really came through. So I guess we got some converts to the, to the no calculate approach, right? Um, so, so Tamra J comes, uh, Tamra J1 comes up with this pretty slick little uh, code right here where selected sales, all selected, right? He then summarizes the selected sales by the sales delivery date key, um, and sums the amount. And that's pretty smart. Um, because number one, um, he is, uh, he, he, you know, you're going to severely limit the number of rows that you have to X aggregate across, um, because you're not, you know, instead of millions of rows, you're going to have probably hundreds or maybe, uh, maybe a thousand or a few thousand rows. Um, so then he does a sum X across the values of the calendar date key, uh, filters the sales where the delivery date key equals that date, and then sums X, sums X across that table, the sales amount. All right, so proof in the pudding, right? Let's uh, take a look at the performance of these. I um, will just clear this. And so I've got these labeled. I'll, I'll explain here in a second. So we'll refresh the visuals. And when we do this a couple times. OK, so now what we're seeing here is the C is Alexis Olson's original measure. Um, I just named that, that table C. So that's that one. Um, you can see like, you know, 738, but it's at 14 milliseconds, right? Whereas like my naive kind of no calculate approach, way more. And Brian Julius is a similar, so it's identical in this case. Uh, but Tamara J's, right? It's like, we're talking 59 milliseconds, right? Which is definitely longer than uh, than 14, but uh, let's see what we have down here. 4987, do, do this again. We have 11 and 32. So, I mean, you know, maybe it's twice as slow or three times as slow, but we're talking tens of milliseconds here um, in terms of the performance of this thing. So I would, you know, in my opinion, I think Alexis Olson, you know, he he accepted this as an answer. Um, you know, at, you know, that's pretty, that's within, it's within reason, reason, especially when you take everything else into account from a user perspective and everything else that's going on. We're talking about a couple, you know, tens of milliseconds between, you know, the display and everything else going on. So pretty good uh, performance. So, you know, nice job, job Tamara J. Uh, appreciate the assist on that. 
Um, now, but then Alexis Olsen, he kind of like did the double dog dare you, right? In terms of like, yeah, you know, double dog dare you. Um, and he said, okay, let's, well, what about a cumulative measure? And so a cumulative measure essentially, right, is, you know, we got January and then that adds into February, that adds into March, adds into April, adds, adds all the way down. Um, yeah, but, you know, per year essentially, right? But, uh, you know, all right, right, a cumulative measure that uh, the same kind of deal. Whereas I think Alexis Olson's original, again, is grabs the max of calendar date. The result is calculate sum, use relationship, all, you know, max date, all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, so this, I think this is my pasting of his uh, of his approach to the cumulative measure. All right, I might have, it looks like, you know, no, this has got to be his because it's only got one underscore and I use two. All right, so again, um, Tamara J came up with a, a solution to this. It's very similar. I won't go, won't drain the whole thing. It's out there in the forums if you want to go see it. Um, this was actually, this initially was posted as a response to uh, on LinkedIn um, to the uh, context transition is for suckers. Um, and then he kind of, he posted a, 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 an article in the forums and, and away we went. This was a lot of fun. All right, so now the problem with Tamara J's uh, cumulative function, actually, and this was actually pointed out by Sharma, um, well, who I'll get to in a minute. I, I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his name, and I'll just butcher it. Um, is that here's Tamara J's, right? Yep. Is you can see that the the subtotals and the total are way off, right? It's actually summing. In this is actually summing up all of these, and that's what that number is. Um, and then this is like summing up all of these rows and and all of that. Um, now I did. I went through and corrected that. Um, this is my version of Tamara J's formula where I corrected that. Um, I corrected the subtotals in the total. Um, I also tried it using group by instead of summarize, um, just for the heck of it. Uh, I just was kind of curious what was going on, what was going on there. But the real star of the show in this case was uh, Sharma, and he came up with with this really slick little measure where he's summarizing all. He originally had all, so I switched that to all selected because so that would preserve the the slicer filters. He originally had all there. I just that's the only modification I made was all selected. Um, where he's all, you know, summarizing in by delivery date key, um, gets the whole sales sum. He gets this year. Uh, he creates a year month column, which is, you know, year of delivery date, you know, times 100 plus month. He also created this uh, this year month. He added this calculated column, same formula um, into the data model. And so then he can do a sum X where he filters, you know, where the year month is less than the count max of the calendar year month. Um, now, I did create one. Uh, revision to this where okay let's say that the you know you're not allowed to change the data model um so i went ahead and created a version where you didn't have to create that column in the data model you just do you, you know again max calendar year times 100 plus max calendar month same as you know same effect um all right so let us take a look at the performance clear this and then we'll refresh the visuals all right, so let's take a look at this initially. Uh, so here is the original. So we're about 283 milliseconds, and that's pretty standard. Uh, when I've been doing the testing here, it's always been around. It's been over 200. It's been like two to 300 millisecond range. Um, what's interesting is like you know, <laughs> Tamer J's. It's got the wrong subtools, but 94 milliseconds. I mean, super fast. Um, now, when I did the revision to it, it definitely extended it quite a bit. Um, what's really interesting to me is if you just substitute summarize with group by, right, you get, you know, order of, order of magnitude, you know, more um, than if you're just using summarize and using group by, which I thought was interesting. Um, but uh, that's basically because in summarize has an implicit calculate in it and group, group by does not. Um, all right. So, but again, the real star of this, uh, the cumulative one is Sharma. And look at that. 76 milliseconds versus you know 200 to 300 milliseconds and even the revised version is is basically 91 milliseconds right and this is again pretty consistent uh let's go ahead and collapse these and we'll do it again we'll refresh it and we'll refresh it again and we'll just take a look at so 282 in that case as far as the dax function sharma's is 72 milliseconds you know, the revision of that is 102 milliseconds, still twice as fast as using calculate. Um, 260 milliseconds, 70 milliseconds, 
and 91 milliseconds, right? So, you know, twice as fast. Um, so <laughs> now I got to tell you, I mean, when Brian and I, you know, we, we, we've talked extensively about this, um, especially when Brian, you know, Brian was putting all that effort into, uh, you know, is there a real statistical difference? He's done some fantastic statistics work on that. Um, but we all, we both were like, well, oh, at some point, the no calculate approach is not going to be as fast as calculate because that's what everybody says. That's what we've always, everyone's been saying is that calculate so performance and it's just so much more performant than anything else that's out there. It's just the greatest DAX function in the world. But I never thought I'd be, you know, so we haven't seen it <laughs> in terms of, you know, Brian's found no evidence for it. And I never thought I'd be sitting here saying, you know what, actually calculate is costing you performance. Um, because clearly the, the Sharma no calculate versions are clearly faster, um, twice as fast as as the no as the calculate approach. So I don't know, man, it's been a wild ride. Uh, when I wrote a DAX cookbook years ago, you know, it's it was, you know, I used no, the no calculate approach just because that's how I wrote my DAX. And I always th always felt that it was simpler and easier to learn things that way using a no cal calculate approach versus using calculate. Um, so that book was kind of geared towards, you know, people that were newer to DAX. Um, you know, in a, and, you know, ever since I wrote my Calculate article, I, I, I've always felt like I'm kind of out on, on an island, um, <laughs> you know, with this approach. Um, and I've gotten into it a few times on the forums and things like that, you know, nothing nasty or anything. But, you know, people were like, you know, oh, you're, 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 you're like terrible decks. I'm like, yeah, but it's terrible decks that works. Um, <laughs> it's always been my response. Um, but it really wasn't until Brian, like, really, you know, grabbed a hold of it. And this was after an Enterprise DNA video called a DAX counterculture that I presented at, at one of their uh, at one of their summits, essentially. And he really grabbed onto this approach and uh, and really took it and ran with it. Um, but I guess, you know, we're getting some we're getting some advocates, some other advocates out there. Right. You know, we got Tamra J1 and Sharma, you know, so I really appreciate you guys stepping in. You guys are the stars of the show um, and you guys really stepped in and really. Uh, did a great job with this. I, it's it's crazy. I never thought again. Never thought that I'd be in a position to say calculate is costing you performance, but in this case, it certainly is. Um, so that's that's really all I had for this video. Um, again, uh, uh, you know, Swizzle Stick 420. If you're out there, man, drop me a like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you all next time.